Hello everybody, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today for the Trust for Sustainable Living's Climate Justice Education Summit. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah, delighted to yeah, welcome yeah, you to the first yeah, session of our summit this week, uh, which is going to be hosted by the wonderful I Kath will, Lane, I'll who's a Compass Education time, Facilitator. Uh, Compass Education, for those of you who don't know, is a global movement of educators and change agents who believe that a flourishing, right. sustainable world begins oh, with yeah, our yeah. students and schools. They work to empower educators as change makers who transform and inspire students to create a more sustainable world by providing systems thinking training and tools. And the wonderful Kath is going to talk us through the sustainability compass today and share how we can explore generational and educational equality, which is our theme for today. So I'll hand over to the lovely Kath. Welcome, Kath. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Kirsty. It's so great to um, be here. Um, great to see you all. Um, we are going to be um, working together live using the compass, but we're also going to um, be watched um, on video as well, I understand. Um, either way, if you are ready for a kind of interactive, active session, that would be great. We'd really like to hear from you. Um, one thing you might want to just go and grab if you haven't got it handy at the moment is a pen and paper because you might be wanting to scribble some ideas down and draw some compasses. So if you haven't got one already, um, perhaps go and get one. I'm just going to share my screen. I hope everybody can see OK. Fantastic. Um, so yes, as Kirsty said, my name is Kath. I am um, from Compass Education. And what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to introduce you to the Sustainability Compass, which you can see on your screens just here. We're going to talk about intergenerational voices in the sustainability and climate justice conversation. And we're going to um, take some time together to use the Compass to think about how um, we can amplify our voices, or particularly, actually, young people's voices. I can't include myself as a young person <laughs> anymore, which is a shame. Um, those people who are watching on video, we will be using chat quite a lot. Um, so in those moments, it might be a great time for you to pause the video or have a chat amongst yourselves or write down some reflection notes. Um, so just keep that in mind as you watch the video. So we're going to make a start. Everybody, I am introducing myself just with my name at the moment, but maybe you want to know a little bit more about me. So we're all going to introduce ourselves by saying what animal or part of nature we are like. So have a think about a part of nature or an animal that reminds you of you. So for me, it is a starling, quite an ordinary bird, beautiful in its own little way. But when things become really magical is when I'm working with my Compass Education colleagues. As Kirsty said, we're a group of um, educators and some youth um, educators as well who work together to try and get the message out there about our tools and about systems thinking and how useful it is when we're talking about sustainability. So when we're all working together, all these little starlings, we become like a murmuration of starlings. Does everybody know what a murmuration is? Give me a thumbs up if you do. Cool, so a murmuration is when the starlings fly together in a formation and they're absolutely mesmerizing. They never seem to crash into each other. They make these amazing shapes in the sky. And that's what I think Compass Education is like. So what we're gonna do is you guys are going to have a think um, about what part of nature or what animal you are like and then you're going to add it to the chat. 
and it's going to be a chatter fall because we're going to only click enter all at the same time so the chat will be blank and then suddenly it's all going to fill up with these amazing ideas that's the idea it's a chatter fall instead of a waterfall so i'm going to play this video um, of a murmuration just to mesmerize you while you're thinking and adding to the chat and when the video finishes we will all press enter okay <laughs> so I hope everybody could see that video okay. What did you think? Amazing, right? So mesmerizing. So are you ready to all click enter? Have you put in the thing in nature that you are like? Has everybody done it? So let's all um, add to the chat. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> So lovely. <laughs> Very nice. Kirsty, I like your parrot. <laughs> oh, I put why? <laughs> I spent ages typing all that out. <laughs> Is there anybody would like who would like to share with us why they are their animal? If you'd like to talk, you can put your hands up um, or raise your hand on Zoom. I can't see anyone. No. Go on, be brave. Daniel, why did you choose a rabbit? <laughs> you could be brave. You did so well yesterday. We've got some of our students here, some of our student debaters class. So Daniel and Mamudi joined us oh, uh, wow. yesterday and Tuesday and Naomi as well. Great. Oh, uh, I'm really not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that came to me. Just because you like rabbits, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because you like listening with your long, long ears. Yeah. <laughs> Mamudi or, uh, <laughs> uh, or Naomi, would you like to share? It's an action tiger because I uh, like to hide in small dark places. <laughs> so good, very nice. <laughs> How about Naomi? I didn't type it at the time because I'm also experiencing some internet troubles. Okay, no problem. But I think you can pick up heart as well because of the colors and I also talk quite a lot. <laughs> we, we can be chatty parrot friends. <laughs> Fantastic, well done everybody. Really great. So let's, um, now that we know each other's animals, and if you're watching on the recording, um, I hope you've joined in with your animal as well. Um, so just a reminder who Compass Education are. We are a group of people. We're mostly um, teachers and young people who want to get the word out about sustainability in schools and about systems thinking and how useful that is. So we're going to be talking through what do we mean by uh, what, what value does intergenerational dialogue have? And we're going to use the compass tool to do that. But first of all, what do we mean by intergenerational dialogue? I don't know how much discussion you guys have had in the last couple of days about this, 
but could anybody raise their hand or tell us what their understanding is of intergenerational dialogue? Can I have a start, maybe? Please. I think it was inspiring and a good start that we started with animals. And by the way, I can't use chat, but I am B. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's fine. So I say at least like we start with, we started with another creature that we see, we witness, but we are not them, but it's kind of like empathizing. And I am dreaming of like a communication and empathic understanding of each other and our own selves with inter intergenerational dialogue. At least that's where I am. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Love that. Thanks, Eva. Uh, Amandi. All right. Greetings, everybody. My name is Peter coming to you live from Kenya. So intergenerational dialogue to me means where children can conversely agree with the, with the young people and the older people. And then they come into a conclusion and say, look, the young person's idea or views are put into, uh, into consideration. The person in the middle there, young person's idea, like the youth idea is put into consideration. And the older person up there, idea is also put into consideration. That will be my um, contribution when it comes to intergenerational dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. That's brilliant. Great stuff. Would anybody like to add anything? Uh, Mahmoudi shared in the chat a dialogue passed by generations yeah, as well. Great. Daniel, Daniel, you had your hand up too. Have you got another suggestion? Well, uh, I, I thought uh, like a, a talk or a, a dialogue between uh, between generations, between uh, people, uh, 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 where everybody uh, 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 is talk, um, with, uh, where everybody is talking with equal, uh, with equal say in the world. So. I love that. Thank you, Daniel. Really great. So yes, intergenerational dialogue is this, this idea that whatever age you are, you are listened to and have the opportunity to speak, to have your voice heard. So no matter whether you're um, at kindergarten or whether you're um, 80 plus, you're listened to and you have the opportunity to put your views across. Does anybody have anything else to add? And it's also the idea that you're not just speaking into a void of nothingness, that, that you're, you're, what you say has meaning and importance. It's taken seriously. And I think, especially for young people, that's really important. Do you agree? A few nods, a few nods, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the compass tool to think about, um, Inter intergenerational dialogue, the opportunity for people to speak. But first of all, it probably will help if I introduce the compass tool. Um, can you raise your hand or wave at me or do something to tell me whether you have used the compass tool before? <laughs> cool. Okay. Great. Oh, thank you. Brilliant, no problem. We're going to, for those people who haven't come across it before, we're gonna go um, over it. And for those people who have, you're gonna get a lovely refresher. It's, um, it's one of those thinking tools where the more you use it, the more you look at it, the deeper you go and the more interesting that it gets. Um, Ava and I were just talking about how the compass tool is just our favorite. <laughs> so, let me get, so here is the um, compass tool. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with it, it looks like a real compass, right? So one of those tools that we use to find our way in the world or to um, when we're mapping something. But instead of north, south, east and west, we've got 
um, nature, economy, society, and well-being. And here at Compass, we think that those are the four systems conditions, which when they are in balance, that's what sustainability looks like. So if nature, economy, society, and well-being, which are all connected, are in balance, everything's looking rosy and good. And we at Compass Education believe, whoops, we at Compass Education believe that systems thinking is really important in understanding our world and in understanding sustainability. And systems thinking is the um, practice and also sort of reminding ourselves that everything around us is interconnected. So across those compass points of nature, economy, society, and well-being, there are a myriad of connections. Does anybody have any questions? Cool, well, how about we give it a go, um, thinking about each of those compass points so that we know that we're on the same page. We know that when we talk about nature, we're all thinking about the same thing. So um, for nature, it is to do with, this is probably the easiest one to think about in lots of ways, it's to do with the things that are already part of nature. So plants and animals, water, air, rocks, mountains, and we could go on and on and on. And there's a, there's a fantastic list here. We might also think about the things that are impacting nature. So that you can see there, we've got climate change, we've got pollution, some of those issues that nature is facing as well. So everybody, what I'd like you to do um, is to have a look around your room where you're sitting right now. Have a look and see, is there anything that you can spot around you now that represents nature? If there is, can you go and grab it? Or if you can't grab it because it's something that is, you can't grab, like air, then type it in the chat. Great, we've got water, we've got plants. I've got my orange here, a plant, fantastic air. There we go. Oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> the trouble with these backgrounds. I just watered it this morning as well. I'm trying not to spill water everywhere. <laughs> it's looking very, very uh, luscious. <laughs> oh, a nice little plant. Mavundi, I love it. Great. Well done. And somebody's mentioned air and water. So nature is a really... Um, kind of obvious one in a way when we're thinking about sustainability isn't it it's often the what the go-to that people think about but let's think about another system let's think about economy so economy is to do with money so it's to do with um jobs and pr producing things in factories it's to do with maybe exchange rates banks anything to do with money and as a, as you can see there's a lovely long list here again i'll leave you to read that through so have a think have a look around you are there any objects that you can see in your room that you might put in that section of the compass what around you can you see to do with money you can either go and grab it or you can write it in the chat. What's Kirsty got there? Oh, is it a credit card? No, it's my name badge and key fob for work. Ah, great, so for your job, perfect. Yeah, there we go. If I hold it right in front of my face, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is it's what helps me earn the money. <laughs> I have some stamps. So oh. representation of when I want to send a letter to someone, that's I pay for my postage. Ooh, a keyboard. Very nice. Can anybody else grab something? 
can see my midis trying to show us something. These virtual backgrounds are rubbish, aren't they, for trying to show you, show you things, unless you're set in the right spot. Put it right in front of the face to work, doesn't it? Oh, some actual money. Actual money, there we go. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Money, credit cards. Well done. Great stuff. So that's economy. Um, it's basically to do with the economic systems that provide for humans. So let's think about society. Now society, I like to tell um, the students in my class, is to do with groups of people organizing themselves in certain ways. So you can see this lovely um, list here. Um, it might be to do with government, it might be to do with education, but it also might be to do with communities, or it might be to do with things being fair and equal. It might be to do with the law. It might be to do with anything where groups of people have kind of organized themselves together. Look at that list, have a think about it, and see if you can spot anything in your room that might represent um, society. Whoa. What's that Kirsty's holding up? So this is a key ring and it's a nudibranch, which is a sea slug. So, oh. I'm a, I'm, so I'm a scuba diver. So this is one of the things that lots of scuba divers really love is little nudibranchs. Yes. So that's one of the things that represents one of the, the sort of societal groups I'm in as a scuba right, so diver. One of the communities. I love yeah. that. Great. I've got my calendar that I have on my kitchen wall normally because that is something that I use to organize myself, organize meetings, getting together with Compass Education. What else can you guys think of to do with society? I have something here. I, I share an office spot and this is like a free coffee pass in that ah. place. So this nice. means coffee in the business area. Great, I love it. Uh, sorry, everybody, if you can hear barking, that's my dog. <laughs> she's two that's rooms it. away, but she's got a very loud bark. Now, that's what's your the dog owner. Ah, it's a dictionary. So. The dictionary, please. Great, I love that. So that's to do with education and language, all part of society. That's brilliant. Now, if you can't see anything to grab, but you can think of something, you can add it into the chat for society. Society, society is a bit trickier to think of, isn't it? So really put your mind to it. Okie dokie, cool. So, the last one is well-being. So this is the last of our compass points. Um, it's to do with the individual. So your personal health, your personal happiness, um, and have a look at this list as well. So it's to do with your quality of life, how you're feeling whether you feel safe and secure. Have a look around your room. Can you spot anything that you could grab to show us that represents well-being, your individual health, happiness? <laughs> it is a mobile phone but it's not the mobile phone it's the representation of connection to my friends and family oh, being, able, being able to contact them so I've got friends and family all around the world and this is the device that I use to communicate and organize to see them so it's meant to because as I haven't got anyone physically sat here with me <laughs> but it's the That's lovely. representation of the connection fantastic now what's if I'm holding up that it's my right. mi mirror next to my bed. I love it. Great idea. 
Is that a bicycle? So that's so good for your well-being, for your health. Great. Daniel, have you got any ideas? <laughs> Something that makes you feel healthy or happy? Oh, a phone, another phone I see. Thank you. I have got my a cushion so that when I'm sitting on my hard chair, <laughs> I'm comfortable. Oh, now, what's that that I can see? Comfort, what have you got? Is that a mirror? A mirror. Ah, cool. Very nice. Cool. So they are the, the points of the compass. Um, and hopefully, the more you think about them, the kind of deeper you can go. So when you're out and about, next time perhaps you um, go shopping or you go to a place in your community, you could think, hmm, what do I see around here that's to do with nature, economy, society, and well-being? And suddenly your view just broadens out. So everybody, the compass is one of those things where often as individuals, we lean one way or another. So often we might think, hmm, I am more of a nature person. So when I'm thinking about a certain issue, I often go towards nature. So probably Kirsty, with your diving, if you were thinking about the ocean, you would probably go to nature too because you love diving. Yep. So how about everybody else? What is, ooh, Mundi's just gone to get something interesting. Is that a compass? I love it. A compass for finding your way. Great. <laughs> so everybody, you might have a, a, a place on the compass point where you think, oh yeah, I really know about that. So maybe you're somebody that um, is really in touch with yourself. So you do um, lots to keep yourself healthy and happy and maybe well-being would be your go-to. So what I'd like you, you to do on your um, uh, three little dots on your um, screens for Zoom, I'd like you to change your name. So I'd like you to change your name to your first name and then your favorite compass point. So for me, I'm gonna change my name to Kath Nature because that's my favorite compass point. Which is your favorite compass point? Just add it in to your name by clicking on the three little dots next to your face. I can't see my face. Where, where you are on the Zoom screen, if you put your cursor there, I can help to rename you, Mimidi, if you tell me what you'd like to be. Ah, and Claude is nature. Which yeah, come? if you're finding it tricky, you could always add the help. Chat. What nature, what, what compass point would you like to be, Mimidi? Ah, nature. Nature? Okay. It's interesting that quite a lot of people... Okay in this group are saying nature. Comfort, would you like me to change your name for you as well? It's a bit hard on a mobile phone. If you type it in the chat, I can share with you. Great. So if we all have this um, go-to compass point, it's always rem worth remembering, oh yeah, that's my comfort zone. <laughs> that's where I like to be, like to think about. But the compass pushes us to think about those other areas, those other perspectives. And that's one of the great things about the compass tool is it helps us to think about other sides of sustainability. Just because it's there. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We are going to um, go to the Jamboard. 
So on the Jamboard, we have got just a plain compass. And in, in the middle here, we've ri I've written young people's voices, so that idea of in intergenerational voices um, for climate justice. So I thought because you're all young people that we would focus on the young people's voices in this conversation. So let's make a start by thinking about young people's voices for climate justice in the well-being section of the compass point. Can you, um, you can see that I've already written that maybe one of the things that would give you well-being about your voice is feeling supported. Or you might be thinking, oh, are people even listening to me, even though I'm speaking? So can you, in the chat, write down anything that you're thinking about to do with well-being and young people's voices for climate justice? Or if people want to turn their microphones and read them out loud, I can type them up. Yeah, yeah. Kirsty's going to be our scribe, so she's going to create some more compass point uh, sticky notes for us. Yeah, Daniel, go ahead. Uh, so from uh, the definition of intergenerational uh, to, uh, dialogue to uh, actually be taken seriously when we talk, uh, when we talk, uh, when we. Uh, speak to uh, uh so not just to talk to someone and they don't listen to us to actually take seriously what we uh, say great yeah. that's a great one thanks daniel yeah lemaji go ahead Helping is important for children so they can grow up and help the world Wanting to be heard so they can grow up and change the world. That's a great one. One of the things that I thought about, Kirsty, was it takes quite a lot of courage. You have to feel brave to go and speak to adults or people in positions of power. And I think if you're feeling strong inside yourself, that gives you the courage. Yeah, that's a good one. Looks like there's a couple in the chat as well. Uh, okay, so will their contributions be regarded? Health, of looking after ourselves. Brilliant, yeah, it's sustainable selves, right? We have to be healthy and eight and strong so that we can go out there and make the world sustainable. It's a really good point. Uh, who would link them to parliament to be heard? Right. So who, who's, who's listening to them? Yeah. Because support is really important, isn't it? Having support from other people. Okay, we'll just leave it another 30 seconds. Anybody else got anything to add? A couple more in the chat as well. Uh, so we're looking at well-being comfort. So how how are young people's voices for climate justice related to their well-being? Yeah, so but health, health is linked with that. It's to do with not only being healthy, but also being um, kind of happy inside or fulfilled to feel like you're doing good or to feel like you have purpose. All of those ideas would come into well-being. Oh. One of the things that Kirsty mentioned with her phone was being connected to friends, to having um, friends and supporters. Daniel. To actually uh, get uh, results after hard work and uh, um, not just uh, do the hard work and not get results and uh, kind of. <laughs> That's such a good one. 
yeah, to feel like you're making a difference, to feel like your hard work is producing the results that you want. Great, I love that. Okay, everybody, if you're all ready to move on, let's move down to society. Remember, society is to do with groups of people. It's to do with things being equal and fair and rules and guidelines. Namundi. Namundi. Did you want to say something? Yes, I would love to, to say something, Kisti. Go so, ahead. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. So for society, I look at society in a different way. So one for me, if a society is empowered, then, then the society can look after nature. For example, if I come from a society, obviously we take in oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide. So if this society is empowered so that they can replenish the oxygen they take in, for example, maybe plant trees, meaning people around them can also get the oxygen and not uh, like, be dim like, let's say, like, if I take more of oxygen and my child doesn't have oxygen, if you see what I mean. So when I look at it in terms of if a society is empowered, mm -hmm. the nature and the other elements of the campus will be looked after. And that's my thinking. So society looks after nature and it looks after the other two elements or the other three elements of the campus. And that's why, that's why I was, I went first for... Uh, well-being and I thought again and now I came back and say no I'm in for society so that's why I changed my mind <laughs> and, I, and I just love uh, the society where I come from so yeah thank you that's great they're all connected um Daniel mm. Uh, so I want to say support, but I just uh, figure out that it's in the well-being section. But I think that it could be uh, as well in the society uh, because if it uh, uh, people uh, if uh, 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 young, uh, young people are supported by uh, uh, are supported by uh, uh, citizens and they uh, they would like to uh, do more even more change than. They're, uh, they're, then they're, they're in. Yeah. Um, so, so do you mean that the people who are making the decisions need to support young people to yeah. share their ideas? Great, that's such a good one. Ramadi? Then we can spread the awareness to people, so then they will improve their societies. Oh, could you repeat that? I didn't quite hear. The, in societies, we can spread the awareness so then they can improve themselves. Great. So is that to do with education and letting people know about an issue? Yes. Fantastic. So young people as well at the moment have been, or over the last few years, have been raising their voices, haven't they, with the, with the strikes, the Friday strikes, so protest movements. That's, that's a group of young people, a network of people working together to try and make their voices louder. Do you think it works? Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Now, I'm conscious of time. So why don't we move on to um, economy? What do you think about this idea of young people's voices to do with economy? Sorry, can I say something on society? Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, usually, young people want their rights. You understand? They want to ensure that their rights are protected. Yeah. And that affects their well-being positively. Thank you. Great. So the idea of rights for children. Yes. Love for it. Children. 
children's rights. So good. Yeah, that definitely belongs in society too. Thanks, Comfort. Thank you. Mamedi, did you have something else to add? Well, I raised my hand for the economy. Economy, great, go for it. We need enough money to uh, help the child's education so then they can easily learn, but with less money, it will be hard for the children to learn. Yeah. We need financial support for the education, but if you're going to organize a protest, or you want to travel to a community meeting, it, it all takes some money, doesn't it? It's a really good one. Has anybody got anything else to add? Well, the, thing hand that, uh, the thing that you said, financial support for uh, the change that uh, they want to draw. Right. So if you want to change a, a human system, maybe the transport system, something like that, that takes money, doesn't it? Yeah. Mama, did you, your hand is still up. Did you want something else to add? Nope. <laughs> okay, Naomi? It's like sustainable jobs for the future, for people, you know, with climate justice. Yeah. That's such a good example to put in there. Well done. Okay, let's um, move on if that's okay with, any, with everybody. If you think of something like, oh, we've missed out something, we can go back. Um, let's think about nature. What about nature to do with raising young people's voices could we add? Remedy? If we if we have to protect nature, we we can improve the earth so we we, we can grow better crops. Now now we're in a very big crisis because we we don't take care of nature. We just dump garbage. We drop masks everywhere, and we throw wrappers without recycling them properly. So we don't realize that. If Earth tilts, we are going to be the first ones to drop out of Earth. Great. I love your understanding of how connected we are to nature. That's brilliant. So food and then it also the whole nature without it, we, we wouldn't be able to have any well-being, would we? <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Has anybody else got anything else to add? You mentioned before, um, somebody mentioned green jobs. How would that link to nature? Having more jobs that protect nature and improve the health of the environment in a way. Yeah, fantastic. Ah, nice. So Claude has mentioned getting youth involved in the discussion um, to, grow to, to grow trees and to make more um, carbon dioxide or oxygen. Great. Kath, I have one. Great. How about safety, trusting, sa uh, trusting in nature for safety? I love that. And let's not forget about the beauty of nature. Who here has been to a forest and just thought, oh, this is so beautiful and lovely and relaxing. Oh, I just love this. And you get that real sense of, you have? Great. So that's to do with nature. Nature provides us with that feeling, doesn't it? And that leads us to the next part of the compass tool. So once we've mapped out some ideas, and we've done these, this mapping out kind of step by step, haven't we? Because we're working together and we needed to be a little bit organized. But if you were working in the same room or you were working with by yourself or with a couple of other people, you could put down ideas all over the place and just splurge out those ideas. 
The next thing to do is to look for connections. So we just thought of a connection there, didn't we? We thought about how nature, the beauty of nature, provides us with that really warm sense of well-being, that happiness. So on our compass, we could draw a line or an arrow from one part of our compass, that idea of beauty, to our well-being part of the compass, perhaps even to one of the little cards on our well-being section of the compass. So we could also, we talked about um, jobs to protect the environment. That would link to economy, wouldn't it? That would link from our jobs in nature to our green jobs section in economy. And then from our green jobs in economy, that might link us to financial support. That might mean the people who are making those uh, or in those nice green jobs then support education projects or protest movements or getting the conversation going. What I'd like you to do, everybody, is have a look. Hopefully you can see it clearly. Have a look. Can you see any other connections? And we could get Kirsty to draw some connecting lines for us. Thank you, Kirsty. Try, I'm trying funny arrows. <laughs> there we go. Who can see another connection? And I think the best thing to do with our little group here is to just talk. Just go. Mamudi, go for it. Get youth involved in uh, discussions to grow trees, then it will improve nature. Could you repeat yeah. that, please? It, so uh, it, I think it uh, goes for green jobs. Yeah, so that might link to green jobs as well. Okay. Great. Very nice. And also uh, rights of a young people protected uh, is connected for financial support for education. Very nice. Who can see another connection from the rights of young people protected somewhere else on the compass? Daniel? So really spread awareness, improve ourselves to financial support for education. And uh, that uh, spread awareness, improve ourselves to supporting young, uh, young people's ideas and voices or empowered to look after nature and uh, live sustainably. Great. Okay, so we'll go down this way. Woo. <laughs> Now, what you might be noticing is our compass is starting to get messy, isn't it? And that is good. Mess is good. <laughs> Don't stress the mess because it, what it's showing us is that idea that we talked about at the very beginning of how everything is interconnected and related. And what we're doing is we're mapping out this whole system and, and how it's connected. You can see another connection. What I'm noticing is nothing's connecting to well-being at the moment. Can you see a connection from something in well-being? Daniel, go ahead. Uh, what about health and looking after ourselves of, uh, connected to rights of young people protected? Great. Yep. Daniel, you, you had something to... Go ahead. Well, uh, uh, well, people. Oh, Daniel first, okay. and then Mamadi. Oh, uh, as well, protect, uh, protecting the uh, earth, to pro uh, earth to protect our food and health systems, uh, uh, as well to fulfill and have a uh, purpose. Uh, maybe our uh, yeah. well-being. Uh, um, uh, Important to uh, be heard so they can go up and change the world uh, with others in the society. I don't know. 
Well done. Yeah, that's a really great one. If we start to, to make a difference, we're going to feel great, aren't we? <laughs> Very nice. Now, Mama D. Our people listening is also connected to empowered to look after nature and live sustainably. Very good. If you feel like people aren't really listening, then you don't feel very empowered, do you? That's a really good one. Being empowered to look oh, after nature right. and live sustainability is also connected to the youth involved in the discussion to go to. Right. Okay, so so what you're probably noticing, and I'm keeping an eye on the time, okay, is we have that we've got lots of connections and we could go on and on and on, couldn't we? But what I'm hoping here is, is there anything that you're noticing? Hmm, if I made this one happen, or if I made this one different, it's going to make a big difference to these other parts of the compass. So what I'd like you to think about looking at our whole compass, and if you're watching the video, maybe you've created a compass as well, and you could have a think about that. What could you do to raise your voice for climate justice? What are the things that you as young people could do to raise your voice? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a word cloud together. Before we do that, Kath, can I just mention quickly, I've drawn these arrows as one way. I've only drawn an arrowhead at one end, mm -hmm. but many of these connections would go back the other way. So if you get youth involved in the discussion to grow trees, that's going to empower them to look after nature and live sustainably. So all of these things, all these arrows could be double ended. So the connections go lots of different ways. Ah. And you, you can see that it can get even messier. Yeah. Beautiful mess. <laughs> Um, I tried to keep it a tidy mess. <laughs> when we're working online together, we need to just, <laughs> but it, it's, it's going to look like noodles at the end. And if it looks like noodles, that means you're thinking about connections is really great. And that's what we're aiming for. Okay. So Kirsty has just put into the chat um, the link to Menti. What I want you to think about is to raise my voice, I will. No, I've got your email, that's fine. And have a think about that. Type it in. And we shall see. Perhaps if you don't consider yourself a young person, but a teacher or a person of an education position or you could think about how you could raise the voice of young people or how you could help to support young people's voices being raised as well as your own. Right. Oh, here we go. We've got some answers popping up. Great. Share your experience. Mamudi, you've got your hand up. Ken, welcome. You have a question or something you'd like to mention? Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Ken speaking from Nigeria. Welcome. I don't know where he, yeah, uh, I'm glad to be part of this program, even though I didn't join so early, but based on the little time I spent, I was able to learn a whole lot. Yeah, I, I sent some members' message uh, asking how we can be part of this because Africa seems to be one of the most vulnerable con continents as far this particular issue is concerned. So, like me now, I, I'm also like a pioneer of this particular thing because when we go to some local communities, we discover that people are hearing about climate action and nets of attack for the first time. So, it's, it's quite difficult down here. But what I'm asking is if there is a way we can partner with the people. At least to get some resources, get some lecture notes, seminars, and if there's a way people can also help us to send this to our own communities so that they can benefit from this because climate uh, concern and anything that has to do with nature concerns everybody, not just a particular continent. 
That's what I'm asking. And I want to thank you for this wonderful program. I have been able to get some, and I also go to the YouTube page and get more information about this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So Ken, at the end of the session, I'll be sharing in the chat the link tree for all of the different ways you can contact and get involved with Compass Education. Uh, this session has been recorded. I know you missed the earlier section, but we'll send you the link so you can watch the whole section through uh, again as well. But yes, we'll absolutely be showing the links to Compass Education, how you can get involved. And uh, they've got an amazing range of resources on their website for how you can use this with your schools, or with your communities, um, how you can use it as teachers or as young people to, to make change and be getting involved in systems thinking. But yes, it's a fantastic tool. We also have um, various courses for teachers as well. Have a look out for them. <laughs> yeah, upcoming at TSL, hopefully not too far in the yes, future. Exactly. <laughs> um, so everybody, um, look at our our word cloud. It looks brilliant. Build a network, movement, awareness. Listen, love that one. Especially as older people, that's I think what we should be doing a whole heap more. Um, sharing experiences, campaigning. Yeah make i like it and groups networks are so important so brilliant um and so everybody that is it from me thank you so much for your participation and um do keep in touch with compass education um, we'd love to hear from you and um, we're on social media on facebook and all of that jazz so keep in touch <laughs> and thank you um to the Trust for Sustainable Living for this great opportunity. It's been so nice to meet such a range of people and um, good luck with the rest of your summit. Thanks very much, Kath. Kath, have you got any time for questions? If we've got any questions from the audience, anyone wants to ask you? Sure. Fantastic. So I've just shared the link to everyone for all the different ways that you can contact Compass Education. So if you do want to get in contact with them and look at the amazing resources, you can click on that link tree and that sends you to every possible way you can contact or connect with Compass online. Uh, and if anyone's got any questions for Kath uh, about the Compass or how you could use it in schools or how you can use it as change makers within your school as a teacher, uh, feel free to, to ask. And one thing to mention about the Compass tool is it, it can just be a conversation. It could just be drawing it in the sand. It could be on paper. You can do it by yourself. You can do it in groups. It's one of these tools that's really flexible and just use it however is gonna make it work for you and help your thinking. All right, um, got a question for you, Kat. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for the wonderful engagement. I love I love those, those elements. So. Uh, coming from Africa, the angle is, uh, do you have some roots or engagements in the African continent, for example? I see young people very active there, and it's rare to see such uh, young, uh, very young little ones contributing and asking questions. And I love that level of confidence of the, the young people who are like actively engaged. Do you have some roots in Africa that like you have shared this with to engage in terms of what you do in relation to campus. I see it's a good tool. We have um, a few uh, people who have done our courses who are based in Africa. Um, I think Comfort being one of them. Um, <laughs> so uh, yes, we have a few routes, but it's, it's small. And so what we would love is for um, the people on this call to advocate for Comfort education as well. And we would be very happy to support anybody worldwide in their in, in their understanding and their use of the compass tool all right thank you because like i do i do few things with young people and something i do is um students for sdgs and goal number 13 on climate action is really key and oh. here is where i visit schools and talk to them about the sustainable development goals and i see the compass tool can be really good 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 tool to engage them when some of my friends go to school to speak to them. So personally, I'll, I'll try to find you so we yeah. can engage uh, on the side and see how best we can uh, have, support have each other. Our, oh, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> have a look on our website. Um, yeah. We have a, a free 15 minute compass course for educators. So that's yeah. a free course you can just click on and work your way through. And then we also have a young systems thinkers course. Um, yeah. 
so, so that's specifically designed for primary school aged kids um, or teachers of primary school aged kids. So those mm -hmm. two might give you um, some pathways to follow. And of course right. on the website, we have a load of um, lesson plans that teachers have put together and shared with us using the tools. So for all age groups from um, kindergarten all the way up to adults. So that might be something to have a little look at as well. So our website is the place to go. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. I'll have a look. And obviously, right. if I need a hand, I'll come find you. All right. Great. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Compass Thank also you. do their teacher training online as well. So if there's not a physical Compass facilitator in your region, um, you can access all of their Compass courses online, which are excellent. I was one of their testers when they first went on yeah. <laughs> first went online a few years ago when everybody started joining zoom because of covid so uh, all of those resources are available online well i was just i was gonna say i am a compass student as a coach too so it's for anyone who is related with nature with themselves mental health it's a big community so mm -hmm. once you join a compass class uh, you become part of that community and you get support as a parent, as an educator, and as like I suggest, like many different job uh, job people, like it's it's good for medical people, I guess. So that's a, that there are like different options there. Yeah. It's also great for using outside the classroom as well. I used to use this with students on residential field trips. So we would go and interview local fishing communities to find out how they were being impacted by climate change using the compass tool. And we used to go and uh, work with uh, hill tribes in Northern Thailand to find out how they live sustainably with nature. So it's not something that has to be restricted to a classroom either. It's a really easy tool to have and use when you're out and about with students as well. Yeah. So, Mamoudi's shared a lovely little note. So thank you for the fun workshop. Thanks Mamoudi, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. <laughs> Kath is very pleased too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Wonderful. Any other questions anyone would like to put to Kath? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, wonderful. Well, all of the links for Compass, as I said, are shared in the chat. This video recording will be made available on Facebook shortly. Um, also on the TSL community platform, tsl.earth. If you're not a member yet, you're welcome to join that. We encourage it. We're going to be working with Compass long term. So there's going to be lots of exciting resources and work uh, with TSL and Compass that appear mm -hmm. on that. Um, and the video will also be available on our TSL YouTube channel. So thank you very much, Kath, for joining us. Oh, and that one so wonderful whiz around the Compass and a better <laughs> understanding of how we could use it to address topics such as intergenerational equality and the climate crisis. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. I'm glad you've enjoyed the session. Thank you for your interaction and participation. Uh, we hope that you'll be able to join us for our next session. Claude, actually, that's with us, is one of our next speakers from Yungo, which is the uh, official youth constituency of the UNFCCC. And they're going to be talking about uh, reducing inequality and inclusion rights for young people in the climate crisis. So that will be starting on the same link that you joined this webinar on, uh, this meeting on, sorry, in about 20 minutes time. So thank you for joining us, everyone. And we look forward thank to you. hopefully welcoming you to the next session. Thank you very much, Kath, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone.